Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Modern cookers today have multiple functions on their control. They either use a selector switch or a printed circuit board to control the functionality of the cooker. And there are many different programs that are on the actual controller. One of the functions is the conventional convection oven. The convection oven uses grill element and the base element to cook the food. It may be fan assisted or maybe not fan assisted. You may also have an individual function where it's only used for warming and this would only use the base element to keep food warm in the oven. But the base element can cause a lot of problems with modern cookers today because they're in a cavity hidden underneath the base of the oven. And one of the most common problems with these is they are in a very uh, concealed area. This means that they get exceedingly hot down there and sometimes they can actually break down on the actual carcass of the element and cause earth problems which would cause your consumer unit to trip. And this may be happening on any function that you're using if the base element goes faulty. In this video I'll be showing you how to test a base element using continuity. I'll also do a test using ohms resistance so you're able to ascertain what the value of the element is if it's functional and you would do that by the voltage that's stamped on the plate on the element in conjunction with the ohms reading, the resistance, put this into an ohms law calculator and we'll be able to establish the value of the element. We'll also do a live test on the element to ascertain whether the controls are sending power to the base element because sometimes this may not be working due to a faulty uh, selector switch, circuit board or even a wiring fault. Okay, before ever working on any appliance, you should always unplug the appliance from the electricity. If it's a freestanding cooker that you have, you may have to isolate the power to the cooker as this is a fixed unit and it would be running on a 30 amp supply, so there would be no plug on the appliance. The first thing you're going to need is a multimeter. doesn't need to be an expensive one. This uh, needs to have continuity, ohms reading, and of course the voltage for whatever country you're in. Uh, next, you want a good set of screwdrivers because it will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer on which uh, way the appliance comes out of the carcass or you're able to gain access on a freestanding cooker to obtain access to the back of the cooker. And it will vary. And the other thing I would suggest is a set of pin nose pliers because when pulling these wires off, it's very easy to cut yourself if your hand slips and goes against the edges on these cookers. They are very sharp. Right, first things first, understanding where the base element is and what the other elements are. I have done two other videos to assist in this series of videos in testing individual elements and understanding the functionality they have with regards to your oven. At the top, we have the grill element. This can either be a single circuit grill element or a dual grill element. This is a dual grill element and there's four wires attached to it. Next to the fan motor, is another element just down here and this is called the fan oven element and at the bottom of the cooker we have the base element and this is the one that we're going to be checking. Okay using the pin nose pliers the first thing we need to do is remove the two connections. Uh, these can go on either way because this is a single circuit element. Now our first test is a straightforward one and it's the most basic test. If we turn the meter to continuity Make sure the meter is functional. You can do this by just touching the two probes together and you should have perfect continuity. If your meter has a buzzer, it will be buzzing as well. Uh, then we can do a test across the element and of course we've got a reading, meaning it's got a circuit. This doesn't really do anything apart from establish that the element is functional. If you wanted to understand the wattage of the element and how much power that element has got, you would be able to use Ohm's Law Calculator. Now you only need two numbers to establish the third number of the wattage. We know the element is a 230 volt element when it was built. By using Ohm's Law, and I'm setting the meter to Ohm's lowest reading 200, and reading across this, we can see that we've got an Ohm's reading resistance of approximately 48 ohms. 230 volts into the calculator with uh, 48, sorry, I forgot the voltage then, uh, resistance then, 48 ohms resistance. This will establish that the element is 1100 watts. On this oven, for example, when cooking, it would be using 
part of the grill element as well. Now this grill element is a 2200 watt element on full usage, but when it's only using the inner or outer circuit, it is only 1100 watts. So we would expect to see on our meter, when you can see the power being drawn, approximately 2200 watts if both elements were working correctly. If you were just selecting the bottom element, then this would be uh, just drawing 1100 watts. That's the basic checks. Now, as a matter of fact, I'll leave my meter there and I'm just quickly going to discuss if you have a problem with the cooker tripping the electricity supply. Now, it doesn't take much for an oven to be causing a problem with a consumer unit if one of the elements have become faulty. If the element becomes faulty, it is leaking electricity to the earth or the chassis of the appliance. And the breaker that is in your consumer unit called an RCD is designed to detect this and knock out the electricity. It can happen immediately when you turn the cooker on, or sometimes it can happen maybe three or four minutes into the cooking process before it trips the electricity. Because the element is getting warm, it starts to break down and allow electricity to leak through to the chassis on the element and therefore track through to the chassis on the cooker. Therefore, your breaker trips out. Now, the only way of testing an element properly, and I haven't got it with me today, is an insulation tester, sometimes known as a mega. This is a Pacific instrument that's very expensive to actually test elements and appliances. But the, you, I wouldn't expect you to have one of these in your toolkit. It is a very expensive item and it costs a couple of hundred pounds. But if you insulate both the wires on the actual element and then do a live test on the actual cooker, meaning that you need to be confident with electrics to do this, and I've insulated these for safety purposes, you would then be able to use all the functions on the cooker to test whether it's heating on the oven setting, on the grill setting and so on, to isolate if the, this element was the one that's causing the problem. If it doesn't trip the electricity and it was tripping it before, then you can presume that the base element was the problem and therefore get a replacement and replace the element. But that's the only easy way of testing. Now, what I'm going to do now is connect the cooker back up and I'm going to show you how to test for power getting to the element. Now, this is a live test and should only be done by people who are competent with electrics. And I do emphasize this. If you don't feel competent with electrics or know what you're doing, you should get someone in to do this for you. I'm going to use some crocodile clips for ease of filming. And that means I'm able to go to the front of the cooker and turn the cooker on without having to hold the probes. And I'm just putting one on each of the meter here. And this one doesn't want to go in. There it is. So I'm putting one on the live feed, one on the neutral feed, setting the meter to 200 volt range. And that's on 200 volts. I'm now going to plug the appliance in and I'll turn it on. Now, first thing you need to be aware of, whenever you've had the power disconnected from the cooker, it will automatically go to an auto function on the timer. So you will need to turn the timer to manual. And if I turn the timer to manual, and I'm having to do this sort of crookedly because I've got to see the front, and I'm going to turn the oven to the convection setting. This is sending some power to the grill element on either the inner or outer circuit, and it's sending power to the base element. As you see, I've set it, but there's no voltage showing here. This is because I haven't turned the thermostat. When I turn the thermostat, you can clearly see that we have 240 volts present at the actual base element. And I'm just going to show you how this works in conjunction with the um, uh, grill element. On the outer, we have 240 volts, but on the inner, we have no voltage. And if I drop my hand down so you can see, uh, this means that it's using one circuit on the grill element and one circuit on the base element. This establishes that the base element is all working correctly. 
If you don't have any voltage at the base element, you can presume that you have a fault with another part of the appliance. This may be the selector switch, you may have a broken wire or intermittent fault on a wire, and on more modern cookers today, you have circuit boards built into them. And I have no idea why manufacturers are using circuit boards apart from they're cheaper than buying individual components uh, because they are highly expensive when they go wrong. And if something simple like the relay on the circuit board for the base element had become faulty, then you would have to buy a whole new circuit board unless you were good at diagnosing faults on a circuit board and I have done some videos on this to assist people with problems with circuit board faults but that is basically the easiest way of testing whether you have a good element and good voltage and there you go that's the basic checks you can do for ascertaining whether the element is faulty whether it's gone open circuit or tripping the electricity supply and the other check establishes whether the element is getting power from the circuit board or the selector switch Remember, you can all support the website by buying the parts off us. We have many base elements in stock. You only need to put your model number and make of appliance in, and the search should bring back the results for your machine. Uh, if you don't find the element you're looking for, feel free to contact us, and we'll do some investigating for you to try and find the correct element for your machine. Remember, we do make a lot of videos on appliances, and there are many videos on our YouTube channel to assist you in diagnosing any problem you have with any type of appliance. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Do support the website by giving the video the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if we really helped you, you can always click on the Buy Paul and Peer page and donate to the website, and that supports us no end in making these videos for you in the future. Thanks very much indeed for watching.